What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B High Radio Shouty and stepping in the building. I got a friend to the show family off in this thing. Jose Guapo, what's good with it, boss? Man, all the kid, Jose Guapo is in town. Don't look around. Let's get it. What's up, B High? Man, I am what made me, man. I am, I am who I made me. I am who I made me. Yes, yes, I am. New project out going crazy right now as yes, we speak, man. Yes. Break this thing to me, man. Uh, this is like a mixtape, a warm up, cause I ain't dropped that much last year, so I wanted to drop early this shit, and I gave him a quick mixtape, and yeah. we finna follow up with the deluxe. So it's like I gave him two projects back to back. Talk to me, Jose. What was it that had you holding out for a minute though, man, and not really dropping like you normally do, just around the clock, man? Mm, over through the pandemic, I was just getting myself together as a person, and just making sure I'm on top of my shit as a man. And an artist, so I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna rush a whole lot of shit. So I had to sit back and do a whole lot of thinking. Like the mm-hmm. pandemic gave me some time to think, and then uh, you know I'm, re- I, I wanted to come out and reinvent myself. So I had to just sit back and strategize and come up with some ideas and some marketing schemes and things like that. Talk to me about that pandemic, cause that thing hit all of us to where we had to sit down and think about some things and rearrange some things. What was going through Jose's mind during that time when the world came to a standstill, man? Man, I was worried about turning the pandemic into a pandemic. Come on now. I'm with I that. Worry, you know, I got a song called Bandemic. I worry about turning the pandemic into a pandemic. Like, when it first hit, I ain't gonna lie, like, I was, I take care of my uh, meal system anyway, so I yeah. wasn't really too much worried about, like, catching it and all yeah. that. But I was just, like, trying to see about how we gonna do with this money yeah. and all this old type and all that old type of shit. <laughs> yes, that sir. shit was shut down. Shit started getting serious and stuff. I was like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it caught everybody like. During that time, though, man, because, I mean, a lot of folks did a lot of soul searching during that time, Jose. Were there any things that you discovered about yourself and your journey during that time that kind of changed the trajectory of where you was headed next in this thing? Yeah, I was doing a whole lot of looking back on my, like, career and just things I've been doing in my life as I've been growing and getting older. I was doing a whole bunch of looking back on shit that I don't want to continue doing in the future that I was doing in the past. Yeah. So I was just, you know, growing within myself. You know what I'm saying? Talk, not talking to myself, but just teaching myself a whole lot of shit. Yeah. I was on YouTube a lot, learning a lot of shit. And I was just roaming the internet like everybody else, but <laughs> I wasn't roaming it like as far as, like on no shade room or TNT yeah. type shit. I was roaming that motherfucker looking for knowledge. I, I actually it. learned a lot about um, crypto. I learned about I learned a lot about Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm up on I'm getting up on the NFTs and shit. Yeah, like yeah. That in the metaverse world, and I was just learning about doing a whole lot of things. Like I'm finna have like this little well, I got it already. It airs every Thursday. It's called the Beat It Show. Which it's hard. Is, it's 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 a show that's gonna be it's starting off on on Instagram. We maybe take it up to a podcast level, but you right got now, to, you right got now, to, right Jose. Now, right now we just on Thursday nights at yeah. ten o'clock Eastern. You know what I'm saying? Seven o'clock Western. The beat is show on Instagram, my Instagram live. So I was just coming up with a whole lot of ideas that I want to do because mm-hmm. I want to have so many different incomes of money, and there's Thanks. so many different ways to get this money out here. So like, I even want to start getting into like the YouTube thing because yeah. I'm like a real character, like, and I really can hold a conversation and entertain people that's more right. than just rap. I'm so I just you. started just tapping into other stuff and trying to learn how to do other things. You said earlier that you thought about some stuff that you was leaving in the past that you weren't taking with you. What was it that you felt like you needed to cut out and leave in the damn past, man? Man, it was some people I had to cut out and leave in the past. If everybody went on the same like track that I was on mm-hmm. and there was things I was doing, I had to cut out from just being so high. I had to cut out, <laughs> cut out, had to cut out some of that lean, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Get away from them perks, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And stop smoking as much as I smoke, but I still smoke because we we is a plant, man. Yeah, you know, got to and it ain't hurting nobody. I got bad nerves, so I gotta smoke weed. Yeah, but you know, just had to cut out a whole lot of stuff that didn't mean me no good. Talk to me about them perks and things like that, man, especially in these days when folks is whipping out the fentanyl all over the place, man. Did that give you any fear as far as drug using going forward? When you start to see folks passing out left and right from doing the drugs that they had been doing for a long-ass time. 
No, nah, not really. It ain't get me. Me it ain't get me personally no fear because you gotta know what you're dealing with when you taking something. This is like if you eat some, like if you know you you eat your steak cooked well done. Mm-hmm. Why would you get a medium? Why would you start eating a medium rare? You know what I'm saying? So Come it's just on. like it's just like saying when you doing whatever you're doing, indulging whatever you're indulging in, you need to, you need to make sure you know what you're indulging in. It can be something down this to liquor. Yeah. You, you know, they cut liquor these days. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. cut liquor, so you got to make sure you're drinking the, the right liquor. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Even down to water, you got to make sure you're drinking the right water. <laughs> so they go for, like, one for the people that are taking the pills or whatever. Yeah. You got to make sure you're taking the right pills because at the end of the day, we we can be hypocrites or we can be, you know, Malcolm X or Martin Luther King and say, hey, stop taking pills. And we know people are going to still continue to take them. Yeah. So the only thing I can say on that is that if you're taking pills, man, just make sure you're taking pharmaceutical pills, man. You know what I'm saying? Know, know what a real one is and know, and know the difference between what real and fake because it's on the market and the way that it's in this culture and this industry it ain't they ain't going nowhere. We you got the young life that's turning up on them and all that right now. So I just advise everybody to know what they doing, man. You know what I'm saying? I feel and you. And know your limits, man. You know mm. your limits, man. You Don't know, just cause you see somebody else doing something or abuse something so much, that that may not be the limit for you. Yeah. So you need to know your limit or shit. Just stop doing it because you're a follower. What was it that made you ease up off everything though, man? I was losing focus. Damn. I stopped focusing on a lot of stuff that I supposed to have been focusing on. Like, I, it had like it, it had me like in a don't give a fuck type of mode. mode, mode. Like, yeah. not not like a don't give a fuck. Like, I'm on a bullshit type mode. Just like a don't give a fuck. Like, I ain't stunned it type <laughs> shit. Like, it's a whole lot I'm of cooling shit. cooling out in this thing. It's a whole lot of shit that I could have been ahead of the curve on, mm. which, I, which that's the kind of nigga I am. I always been a nigga that's. A trendsetter. The curve and the yeah. trendsetter. There's a whole lot of shit that I could have been ahead of the curve on, but from me being so high off the wheel or whatever, in the lean, I wasn't even paying attention to the shit. So My God. I done stopped. You can see right now I'm talking clear as hell. Like, I no mean, slur. I ain't interviewed this guy in a long ass yeah, time, baby, man. since he was about 15 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I started smoking when I was like 16. Yeah. Okay, now, Guapo. Living in L.A., man, what was it that made you slide out there to the West Coast and get some of that California love, man? I had been going out there back and forth. Cause my sister, she lived out there since, I think, about 2012, yeah. I want to say, or 2011, 2012. Yeah, I think 2012. So she lived out there. So I was going back and forth out there with her because she graduated from college. So we will go to college parties and all well, celebrations and stuff like that. Yeah. And then we went to graduate. So I was going out there back and forth just Rocking with her, and yeah. then it will, it will always be business out there. Mm. It's always business in LA. It's yeah. always business in LA because, like, you're gonna see majority of people that's not even from LA in LA. Mm. Like majority of the people that I, because I had a year lease. I had an apartment in Hollywood off of Lexington. That's hard. And I had a year lease from, um, Jan- I mean, from February of 2019 to February of 2020. Mm. So you had the perfect time before all hell broke loose. Yeah, man. like I got out of the right yeah. when Corona hit. Exactly. Yeah, like right when Corona hit. So, but it's like LA just lit. LA just lit. But it, it can have you off the grid too, because you know I'm a street artist. Like I'm yeah. a street Atlanta artist. Facts. So it's like if if you out there too long and you ain't around the right people, or whatever, it can have you out the loop and you can get caught up in that Hollywood little world. <laughs> <laughs> it is the world. It do exist. It ain't no Illuminati or no shit like that. Yeah. But there's the world out there. Well, break that down, Jose, because the folks that's watching, they want to know. Well, shit, it's like you got your elites. Yeah. You got your elites, like, you know, like the A-list artists, the A-list actors, yeah. the A-list, the A-list af- athletes, yeah. even down to the B-list. Yeah. You got you got your elites, to, uh, and, and everybody throw parties. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you be in a room full of vultures. And you gotta learn how to move. You know what I'm saying? So like, it, one thing about LA, it ain't about how much money you got, cause everybody got money. Yeah. So you gotta know how to move in a room full of vultures, and then plus it's like every day, every day when, cause I be outside. Like I don't know how to sit in the house. Like yeah, I might be in the house, but if I'm in the house, I'ma down there burn a part of me. It's gonna be yeah. a studio in there, 
and then we're gonna have music we're gonna have alcohol or whatever it's that we need the women may one may need or we need yeah. we're gonna have women around and yeah. it's gonna be loud music with weed smoking and we're gonna be going up okay so now when you touch back down in the a and covid hit what was that like coming back to the city? Did you miss already, the city or nah, had you been back and forth? I had already came back. Okay. Like prior, like I came back in November because it was Thanksgiving. Okay. And that was, that was like the first year that I was off mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving and Damn. Christmas. So I, I went on and came back and I just stayed with the fam to 2019 uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. So I stayed, I stayed in Atlanta for those for that. And then I ended up staying. My grandma ended up passing. Mm. So her funeral was like the first week of January. So I ain't understand for that. So once I stayed for that, it was like I couldn't leave. It was like a time where I couldn't even leave. Like the fam, we needed each other yeah. at that time. So it was like yeah. I couldn't even leave to go back. So basically, I I just had one of my homeboys from LA. I paid the movers or whatever. I just had him to where all my stuff got put in the storage and yeah. whatever stuff I wanted got shipped back to the A or whatever. I exactly. ain't even go out there and move nothing. Damn. Yeah, I ain't no stand here because then the pandemic hit. And I was like, I'm down, so I ain't finna be in LA. <laughs> no, it was going down out there. The down. pandemic. Come on, it was locked down all the way in that thing, too, man. Yeah, and then it's like, I got people out there. Like I say, my sister live out there, and I got a bro mm -hmm. that's like my like my mama had him. He, my brother, like my mama had him out yeah. there. So, but it's like, I ain't got no people out there to be locked, to be locked down. Exactly. Like, I ain't got no people. I mean, I was on Instagram the other day, man, and I saw KC the Beat Monster post an old ass clip of my partner, them, at Crucial. What they were doing? I mean, I saw a young ass Jose Guapo cranking that thing up, man, and it just. What took I had me. on that? I had on the blue vest like yes, this? Sir. Oh, I had yes, on that true living outfit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take me back to that time, though, Jose. What was that like for you jumping off the porch? And then also, even with the rich kids, man, because. You know, I'm about to be all over the place with you right now. It's cool. Let's go. Y'all just had a reunion. Mm -hmm. Sold out show in like two days, man. Yeah. So you already know what the fans and the people want. Why the hell we can't even get a Rich Kids reunion? That's the first question. I mean, we gave y'all one. We want an album. We oh, want a movement. Oh, we want it like the Goody Mob is right now. They back together uh, touring and doing what they do. Oh. Why can't the Rich Kids come together and put out another album? Well, we can. We just waiting on somebody to come with the right bag. Somebody to come with the right bag, and it's nothing. Is the music already there? Man, the music is, is so easy to make. But ain't nobody. Have y'all been jamming together? That's what my question no, is. No, we have not been. I ain't going to lie to the people. We have not been jamming together. <laughs> but it's no. it ain't like no. It ain't no. No snow. problem. It ain't no problem. It yeah. ain't no inner envy no jealousy it ain't nothing going on with nobody in the group so that's why when anytime it's time for us to come together and do something it's you easy. see us all and it's yeah. easy like we just did the ver the verses too did the rich kid versus Trav porter verse <laughs> so it's like every time it's time for us to come together and do something it's yeah. done easy and it be all of us there and don't be no oh one couldn't make yeah. it or two now it be all of us there what is that energy like though man when y'all get back together after all of them years it be fun I ain't gonna cap talk to me man it be fun like it be fun like every time we do a Rich Kids show it be lit like we be on another level like we all just be up the turn like just happy to see each other doing what we doing it be lit like we enjoy each other every time we together it don't even matter where we at how did y'all come together in the first place man because i remember being a grown-ass man seeing these rich kids out here in these streets and y'all was a slick super group out here in the streets like a little now, phenomenon we weren't we weren't, it wasn't that slick about well, it well talk now. to me then come on with it jose it wasn't that slick about leave it leave it now. on there leave it on the table come on we was a group and we had two singles on the radio at the same time it ain't too many and one none of us 18 it ain't too many people that can say they did that but then i'm gonna hit you with this one then let me come back a little bit more correcta a young ass NWA out here. Oh, what was it like okay. seeing a young ass NWA coming together at the teen, uh, at the tender age of damn near teen, early teens, preteen, okay, late so, teens, nigga? So, so this is what was going on, right? This is what was going on. 
it was a it was a football game. It was a it was a high school football game. Uh-huh. Um, it was a high school football game at Lakewood Theater, which is a football stadium that the high school play at. Mm-hmm. That stadium is actually in my neighborhood, Zone Three. So Lakewood. I go I I go to the stadium games, whether it's my school playing or not. I just go to the fuck <laughs> with the hole. You know what I'm saying? Like I get fresh, go up there, me and my little people. We yeah. go up there. From cause, we, Cause it's in our hood So yeah. we don't care what school plan We going up here for whatever school plan holds yeah. So that being said Doug was playing yeah. One night and we went up there And all the rich kids they went to Doug uh, Every other member went facts. to Doug Except for me Yeah, I'm the only member that didn't go to Doug That's crazy. So Doug was playing so when I got up there I had already knew baby Charles yeah. He was from the streets like my dad And his mama like they like sister and brother Like man him like done a like street cousin Like yeah. on some real shit like his grandma Is my grandma So I had already knew him on some From just being some young fly niggas you know, we get the girls. Yeah. We gamble. You know what I'm saying? So Thanks. I knew him when I when when I when I got to the game, I I seen him and then we he introduced me to Caleb. And then Caleb introduced me to uh Rashad, Rich Kid Shouter. I had yeah. already knew school but me and him stayed in the same apartments <laughs> when I was in like the sixth grade. Yeah, I think yeah. he 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 younger than me, so we didn't go to school together. Yeah. We stayed in the same apartment. So I had already knew school but so Seeing him, it was just like we catching up. Like, oh, what's up, bro? What's exactly. up? Exactly. So that same night after the game, we went to the after party. It was at Metro Skates, which is also in my hood, Zone Three. Max. Went up there, and they were like, um, "Y'all need to come to the studio when we leave here. Y'all need to come to the studio. Come to the studio." So to make a long story short, I guess Schoolboy ended up going to the studio with them that night or uh, a time before me, cause that's mm-hmm. when they made what's up. Mm. That's why I'm not on what's up because I ain't go to the studio because I wasn't really rushing. Yeah, I really where am I going to the studio because I wasn't really on no route shit. Mm. So then the next time we, we just start hanging out and shit. What's up? Out we going to all type of team parties and shit like that. We doing Sweet Sixteen. I mean high school and uh, the year high school parties and shit like that. Perform what's up. And then we got in the studio. My first time recording a real song in the studio, which was at Ti um, Mama House right there. Yeah. Um, on the south side. Oh, shit, I made my partner. <laughs> and it was a day of rap. I made my partner. We made a video off a of phone, off a of Metro phone, and we put it on Facebook. Mm. But we was smoking weed. I ain't. I wasn't smoking weed because I ain't smoke weed at the time. But yeah. I think Rashad or somebody else we had in the video was smoking weed, and that motherfucker. This before viral was a thing. That shit went viral on Facebook. <laughs> it went viral to the point where uh, the people at Grand Hustle and shit started getting calls because Rashad is Ti cousin. Yeah. <laughs> so they started getting calls like. They, they were getting good and bad calls. The, the good calls was that these little young niggas got some jamming. Weed. They yeah. jamming, but they smoking weed. And, you know, back then, that when politics and all that yeah. was different. You know, yeah. right now, you can be smoking weed and that don't matter. Nobody care. You can go platinum. Nobody yeah. don't even care. So we was smoking weed and we was on the age. So they, was, it was, they made it a big deal about taking the video down. Damn. So me... Just using my brain, thinking like, I'm like, they making it a big deal about taking the video down. The song got to be some. Yeah. Because why would they make it a big deal about taking the video down Yeah. if, if the song wasn't nothing? So at that time, y'all weren't even signing nobody. Y'all we were just out here just jamming? Nobody. We just out here jamming, just messing with high school girls, <laughs> running around, kicking it. <laughs> Doing what young niggas do, man. What was that like at that young ass age blowing up that big though? Because okay, I'm it gonna was put it crazy. To, like, come on with it, it was see, crazy. Like it was like I don't been through pandemonium. pandemonium. Is that the, is that the right? I'm right? with you. No, that's right, yeah. right, right. Like, I don't been through that running from girls, running from fans in the mall at shows. It was crazy, like because we were like some young. Pop stars like young rock stars. You know I saying? know the impact that y'all made because literally the other day I, I was had taking stalkers in high school. I, it don't surprise me. I had real deal stalkers, no cap. I was taking my fifteen year old girl to a party. She was like, "Hey, daddy, uh, I need you to drop me off at a party." She say, "Uh, I, but I got to get my mind right before we get to the party." She was like, "I need you to put something on, hook my phone up to the Bluetooth." I said, mm-hmm. "All right, I got you." 
And then she puts on the rich kids. I said, what you know about the rich kids? She like, daddy, this it right here. Now this is I, this nigga. This was this was this probably about a couple weekends ago. Oh yeah, you understand what I'm saying? How old she? Fifteen. Okay, okay, okay. This was a couple weekends ago. I said, don't you know? I know the rich kids. She like, you don't know the damn rich kid. I oh, said, so Google be how the rich kids. So she, she wasn't even born damn near. Yeah, so she wasn't even born. That's what I'm saying. That's the impact. That it still got today. Yeah, the city, the city loved the rich kids. You see man. what I'm saying? She wasn't even. Bought, that was what I was. Saying. I said I was there when them boys was breaking all them records. I had to explain that to she her. But I don't even understand. She don't even understand. She, she like that. She understand. told me I ain't even know y'all. <laughs> that what she told me. She said you don't know no damn rich kid. Man, she I don't said, understand exactly. But I'm saying that to say, okay, y'all done went crazy. You got stalkers. Y'all are putting a stain on the game and changing the game and also doing something that Atlanta hadn't seen before. Ain't and nobody, we were still in school. That's what I'm saying. Ain't nobody seen no street kids from in Atlanta, APS. APS, Atlanta Public Schools. Doing it that way in a long time, man. So, I mean, break that whole experience down. I don't think nobody still, I don't even think nobody still did it to this day. Ain't nobody did it after that. To where they was still in school. Come on. The only folks that did it before y'all was crisscross, and see, that goes back to what I was talking to three about earlier. Those type of phenomenons only come every 10 years. You see what I'm saying? So you think one coming? It's got to come. But it's probably gonna come in the next two or three years. The bank come this year. Yeah. Is you gonna bring them? You know anybody for what the hell going on? Yeah, I'm looking. All right now. I'm looking. Take me back to your time though, Jose. Y'all young as hell. Y'all doing college shows, high school shows. Fucking college hoes. What was that like when you thinking to yourself, I'm having the time of my life out here these streets? That's exactly what I was thinking, man. It was like that shit was moving so fast. <laughs> that shit was happening so fast, man. It was like a dream come true for real, for real. Like we getting paid for this shit. We getting paid to go out of town, perform all type of pretty women reaching and grabbing us. Man, that shit was crazy, man. We fifteen to sixteen, man. Then we gotta go when we leave the show. We gotta go back to the A, go home and go to school in that morning. <laughs> With like twenty five hundred of them. Woo, bands, no cap. Okay, Jose. So during that time, man, you look up the rich kids is doing their thing, and then y'all disbanded. What was it that made everybody go their separate ways? I think I don't think I don't think I don't think everybody had the same reason, but I can speak for myself. And for myself, it was just um, I really, I really, cause I, I always been a hustler, mm-hmm. and I, and I would get money before I started rapping. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying I was getting, I was, I was doing my little ones and twos, making sure I was making my ends meet and helping my own dudes out before I started rapping. Mm-hmm. So like I just, and then you know we was too young to sign the contracts ourselves. Our mm-hmm. parents had to. Yeah. So I just felt like I couldn't have my career in nobody else's hands, cause we had missed like three deals. We had three deals on the table, and so. When we when it was time to sign, everybody ain't signed when it was time to sign, and we missed the deals, so like we missed a, sh- a chance. Yeah, and it wasn't left up to me because my paperwork was signed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just basically had left the group on some shit like I'm gonna control my own destiny. Yeah. Destiny, like I fuck with these boy, these boy, my brother, but I'm gonna control my own destiny if I'm a rap. Yeah, like, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be able to determine whether the deal got signed or not. Not because this member of the group or this member of the group didn't sign. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I basically just boss I had to boss up for real, for real. I had to make a boss decision. That's that behind the scenes stuff that a lot of people don't understand. So you telling me you a young man with stalkers and business decisions that need to be made? You know what I'm saying? There's a lot going <laughs> on, man. For 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 a kid, a, kid. a teenager. Shh. A teenager, man. When you look up and folks is following you around town, man, what the hell was going through your mind? They weren't really like? following me around town because I was still in school. It was like they would like it'll be like in school. Like if I'm in the lunchroom, I might be sitting at this table. It may be like a girl or somebody that goes sit at that table mm-hmm. right there and just turn on my pond of them. <laughs> And like and let the whole song play like like 
okay, I know you. I know you know it's me. Like you could just came and said something. Yeah. But you know they weren't. They weren't. The times weren't the same. It yeah. wasn't like oh how you can come and ask for a picture or or how you can do what you do now with artists. It mm -hmm. wasn't like that back then. So I guess that was just a way of showing that they fought it with me. Right. So now, then we turn back around. And it's time for Guapanese in this thing. Yeah, we drop Guapanese. Bring that Bennett. Come on, Pull up, baby. Bring that Bennett. <laughs> Pull up with that Pennett. Meet me in the Trinel. Tell Trinel. Uh, we gonna that tell time Trinel what it brings. Trinel. I'm saying, tell me, we need, we need. Got going right in with me. Need. Ooh. That time in the A, man. We fucked the town up, man. We had the whole town speaking Guapanese. They call it pig Latin and all, and yeah. all that old type of shit. It's Guapanese, man. Yeah. It's Guapanese, man. <laughs> That's the name of it, man. You know, I don't know about the people that was saying it before me. They put it in songs before me or whatever. I popularized it when I dropped my song. I made the city of Atlanta get behind that type of talk. What was it like being a young trendsetter at that time, hitting folks with that lingo, and then also seeing that going viral as well? And now you standing on your own, doing your own song and your own thing, man. Well, I always been a trendsetter even before rap, so it was like that one, the, the trendsetting part when they knew, like it was like I'm, a, I, that was, I was kind of okay and confident in that area. Mm -hmm. But when I seen that it popped on my own, like I was like, oh, I, right, I really can do this. I wish I already knew I could because that's just the type of person I am. Yeah. I'm not I'm not one of them type of person that second guesses they self. Yeah. I'm a no I am that nigga type one of them type niggas. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Confident, but I'm humble. You know what Facts. I'm so I had already knew I was a trendsetter anyway. So basically we were just talking like that amongst the crew and amongst the gang and shit. The key like it was a cold talk just that our crew was using. And then um, Crazy. one of the older guys was like, man, y'all need to make that a song. They were like, man, y'all make this song, it'll be crazy. So we were like, we heard him the first time he said it. So he, he probably told us three, two to three more times that we need to make it the song. <laughs> y'all need to make that a song. Y'all need to make that a song, make it a song. We made it a song, and I ain't even going to lie. Like, we, I ain't even put it out as no single. I put it out on a, on a mixtape, and yeah. that was the one that stuck out and went cray-cray. It went cray cray. Talk to me about that time though, man. Street at Six, QC, and all of the young talent that was around at that time. Y'all vibing and working together, man. What was that energy like? It's two different it's two different times, so you got which one you wanna talk about first? Street, Street at Six. All right, what you wanna know? Yo, Travis part of Chains, everybody over there jamming, bang. I mean, talk to me. I mean, Street Z was fun, you know. Street Z, they, they worked with me on, um, we only worked together up into Guapanese, so anything after that, I was no longer with them. But, yeah, we, we put out the video. We, we They made sure they did their part, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They kept me booked up. Shout out to Dave. Mm -hmm. Kept me booked up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a family. You rocked out, but I kind of did feel played. When Two Chains had um, made the Crinet song mm. because we had the same management, and plus I was rocking with Chains, so I, I kind of felt played. And plus I was young and dumb, hot headed, so I went about it like I ain't really go about it the right way. I went about mm. it like on, on on a bullshit type way, instead of like the business or just you know working it out type way. I ain't really know I was young, man. You know, yeah. I felt like somebody took something from me. I ain't never had nothing took from me in my life. Yeah, I just ain't know. You know what I'm saying? So I went about. I started doing things from this songs into disrespecting people, all type of things like that. Because I was, I was, I had ended up getting heated. I was, I was frustrated. Like yeah. my shit started slowing down. I wasn't getting as many shows and. My song dying down because his song getting bigger, you know, it just was fucking with me in the head. Mm. I was and then plus like I said, I was young. We yeah. all make we all make dumb decisions when we angry. What does grown ass Jose have to say to that young ass man at that time on how to handle that situation? And then also, was it as bad as it seemed at that time or what the hell? Uh, I don't know, I just felt played because I, I, I thought I was gonna be able to benefit off of it too. Yeah. Because of the relationship, man, Two Chain had, and plus we had the same 
management. So yeah. I thought I was gonna be able to benefit. Like I thought I was gonna be able to be in the video on the remix. I thought he was gonna take me on the road with him. He ain't on, he ain't owed me shit. Yeah. So let's get that understood. I didn't feel like he owed me nothing. I just felt like we was cool and as far as the business go, we got the same management, so they gonna make it make sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We could have killed two we could have killed one bird. I mean we could have killed two birds with one stone. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like if I would have piggybacked off of whatever he had going on with my Guapanese record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I just felt played because one thing getting done for real and my shit just declining. Yeah. So I felt played, did some disrespectful shit. And then we end up, they end up, we end up parting ways. But we good now, though. Like, we good. Like, I'm good with Chains. I'm good with Street Just Eggs. I'm good with everybody. How were y'all able to get that clarity, though, man? Because after you caught yourself doing some disrespectful shit around there, man, I mean, a lot of times folks don't come back from that. So, I mean, how were y'all able to mend defenses as men uh, and make it do what it's supposed to? I grew up. Yeah. I grew up, you know, I grew up, and I be seeing, um, I be seeing, like, the, the streets that CEO yeah. and things like that. I be seeing them uh, around in the city and shit yeah. like that. And every time I see them, I just let them know, like, I ain't that same kid. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I grew up. Like, let's put that behind us and move forward. Whether we do business together or not, it's just, let's not have no unnecessary bad blood. That's right. QC. QC. That time over there, man, what was that like? Because those were those stages to where it was a powerhouse going on at yeah, that time, that was, man. Yeah, that was fun. QC was fun. I ain't gonna lie. QC was Talk fun. To me. I just honestly believe that, um, I just don't think Pete, 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 Pete had it all the way figured out with what he wanted to, to do yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's all I honestly think because... Everything was everything. It was just like a, it was a whole lot going on. Like the Migos was caught up in that little situation with 300. They couldn't put no music out. I just think a whole lot of shit started getting frustrated. Then he only one man. Yeah. And he had all them artists. So it's like, how much can you hold them to? You know what I'm saying? Like everything that he told me, he did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I was never even signed to him on no paperwork. Yeah. I was just solid foundation management and I was a quality control artist because. Of how me and P had our relationship, and he wanted to see me win. Yeah, and I respected it. So that's how I became QC. And plus, I had locked in with the Migos. We had got real cool, and shit. I was like QC, like the best look right now, and that where we went. Cause I had dropped for the rock game, mm. and P loved that song. So he was like, "Shit, I'm fucking with you." He used to be pulling up on me, telling me all racks for him. Now just telling me, just telling me, stand in the studio. Stand studio, keep working, stay out of the street, shit like that. Yeah. And then once it all came full circle, I was I was loaded. I'm like, shit, I'm QC. This yeah. who rocking with me. This who fucking with me. You got to fuck who fuck with you. Come on now. So that's how I was. And I gave them all my loyalty. Yeah. The industry during that time, though, man, because, I mean, you know, during this conversation, it's kind of taking me back to my younger days in radio and just running around in Atlanta listening to some good music. And I remember seeing y'all guys, the energy behind what was going on was so exciting because, okay, let me break it down a little better now. Right now, we got artists, we got a bunch of vets in the game right now. At that time, it was a bunch of young guys coming into the game. Yeah, hungry. You see what I'm saying? It was that hunger. It was that young hunger yeah, that you was like, okay, what are these boys about to do for the city? What are they about to take this city now, man? Yeah. What was it like being in the midst of all of that energy? I don't know. It was, it was just like we were running around the lobby, man. We was just having fun, for real, for real. Like, once we started having fun, that's how all that music got made, because we were having fun, for real. Like, once it's not fun no more, it gets frustrating. Mm. So that's another reason, like, why I, um, um, music didn't get put out that much last year, because it, it, it kind of had, it wasn't that fun. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm with you. It wasn't that fun like that last year, so... It's just like a whole lot of discouraging. So, but now it's like it's back fun. Like I'm, yeah. I'm back having fun. So, it's just we were having fun. Like when we was over there at QC, like everybody kicking it. We living. We we touring. I don't know, man. It was just oh, it was lit. It was a lit time of my life. 
What were some of those collaborations, though, man? I mean, those run it ups and stuff like that. I mean, just different songs. It was just us, really. What was your favorite studio sessions going in there jamming, though, Jose? My favorite studio sessions is like, it ain't no particular song that was made, my favorite studio sessions. Because mm-hmm. I just do songs. Yeah. When the session lit. That like, my favorite studio session is when I do the most songs. Mm. Like, I don't ever just go record one song. Yeah. But I ain't gonna lie, the day I recorded Run It Up, mm-hmm. that was the only day I only recorded one song. What? Yeah, I recorded one song that day because I ain't really had no session. I was just at the studio. Yeah. And we went like to the D room, like the C room. Well, yeah, it was the D room. It was a real small room. And I was just ready. I was just itching to work, itching to record. I was ready to record. We was smoking. Yeah. I was trying to record. Fucked around and recorded, running up that day on a humble, for real, for real. Yeah. Like, I wasn't even at the studio to record. I ain't had no engineer or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just went and found somebody like, hey, I'm gonna call it right fast. <laughs> Spiffy was there. Yeah. So Spiffy to pull some beats up. Lucy was already there and Skipper was there. Yeah. And that's how we ended up knocking that song out. But it's just like, when I go to the studio, I just like to have it lit. Like, I got to be lit already. Like, I don't like to go to the studio to get lit. I like yeah. to already be lit when I get there. Yes, sir. So we, the vibes just automatically come out. You know what I'm saying? When you look back over your career, though, Jose, what was your favorite time, man, where you were just having the time of your life in this thing, man? Uh, probably when running up, start peaking. Mm. I don't know, though, because Guapanese, I was having fun. Yeah. I was having fun for when Fuck the Rock Gang came out, because that when I was doing a lot of street shows, like clubs, holding the walls, like the Chitlin Circle. Yeah. Like, running up, I started doing worldwide shows, like, mm-hmm. like all the 50 states. Yes, sir. Like, I don't have a show in Alaska and Hawaii. I didn't make it to the shows, but I had a show in Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> that's crazy. But, yeah, like, that's it. Maintaining your footprint in these Atlanta streets at the same time, man. What was that like, being in between the streets and the music industry at the same time? That's not a good place to be. That that's not a good place to be because it's like a it's like a balance. Yeah. So it's like you you can easily be knocked out balance. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Say let's say if we put the streets and we put the rap on a triple on a triple bean scale. Yeah. No, you know it can go up and go down, go yeah. up and go down. So you don't even want to really be one foot in, one foot out. You yeah. want to be two foot in. Like this year, I'm two foot in. I'm a rapper. Like I don't know nothing about the streets. Yeah. I don't think I know how to do it. Tell you how to turn left and right and stop at a red light. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. Yeah, stop at the stop sign soon. XBL artists in the business, man. I yeah, mean, what's SBL, going on with it? Free SBL Hendrix. SBL Hendrix shot. Hendrix done got locked up, man. Yeah, yeah, Hendrix locked up right now, man. But My you God. know, that ain't nothing but a small thing to a giant, man. Yes, sir. Minus setback for a major comeback. That's right. B shot finna get FBL shot. He finna get ready to drop. What up, though, next shot? Month, he finna yeah. get ready to drop next month on his birthday. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, SBL roster, man. We got SBL Rich Baby in Rochester. We got SBL Dumbo in DC. That's we right. We got SBL LA. She don't really rap, but she do her. She SBL. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We got SBL Lil Joe. That's right. And, and Cali. He don't really rap, but he play a part. Oh, yeah. We got SBL CZ Tiger here in Japan. Yes, we got sir. we got SVL Renee. She like an enemy influencer. She's like an influencer and she's an R and B singer. That's hard. Yeah. And I got a couple more like artists and producers that I'm looking at, but right now that's the roster. What is some of the best advice that you received in the game, man, during your time? Don't give up. Yeah. Like it may sound simple, mm-hmm. but it's really what you got to listen to. Don't give up and stay consistent at whatever you're doing. Like, continue doing it. Anything you keep doing, you're going to get better at. Yes, sir. And then people, and people, no matter, like, how long it take people to recognize the art, they're going to eventually recognize the art. Yeah. Like, it's people that come on my uh, social medias daily, and they be like, oh, I just got put on to you today, 
And I just when I heard your music, you so dope, you so dope. So it's like the people they they catch on to you off of this one song, and they go type you in, and they go find your old song or whatever. Like it's a lot of people. I'm getting a lot of like um little random fans and shit because they just had me on this show, Catfish. Yeah. yeah. Somebody had used my picture to catfish two holes. <laughs> so it's a whole lot of fans that never heard of. They say my name on the actual show. Like, yeah. they say Jose Guapo. Yeah. So, it's like, a lot of fans, and it's, like, a lot of people that wasn't fans, they just hearing my name, and they seeing my picture that I'm a rapper, and they going to find, they coming to find me. Yeah. And they let me know, like, yo, I found, I, I'm from Catfish. I'm from Catfish. I done, your work is dope. You hard, you hard. Woo, woo. So, it's like, I'm just ending up as it go. Come I'm on. with it. I mean, working with folks like Gucci Mane, being able to do records with him and get game for him, what was it like being able to be around that man and get the game directly from the horse's mouth, man? It was like some shit you couldn't pay for, man. And I didn't pay for it. My God. He ain't even charging nigga, man. Shout out to Guwap, man. Guwap, one of the riddles in it, though. Like, I can say that. I can't say that. He wanted to see the young niggas win. Like, he always wanted to see me win. Everybody that was around when it, when he had when he had the um ten seventeen brick factor over there, yeah, on Memorial Drive, mm -hmm. everybody was around. He really truly wanted to see everybody win. Yeah, he wasn't trying to rip nobody off. Yeah, he was just fucking with it. Like every Gucci Man feature I got, I never paid for. I never asked him, and I ain't never had to ask him. I asked him to get on one song. Mm -hmm. Really, I ain't even asked him to get on that song. That song was playing off, and I I pulled it up for Scooter to get on it, for Young Scooter to get on it. He walked past the studio and heard the song, and he was like, who song is this? And everybody was like, that Guapo, that Guapo song, that Guapo song. And he was like, oh, I'm finna get on this. And that's how I got my <laughs> and that's how I got my first Guap feature. That's crazy. And then after that, from that on, from that on, he'll just be testing, saying, come to the Brit Factory, come to the Brit Factory. When we come to the Brit Factory, he, he gonna already, he always recording, and he'll just throw you in the booth, like, throw you to the walls. He'll do a, he might do a hook and a verse and then come out and be like, Go ahead, Guap. Go ahead, Guapo. Yeah. But you don't even know that you finna be on this song though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it ain't like you like cause if you knew you probably had some time to write <laughs> or anything or try to come up with some shit in your head, he might just come out the booth and say, Go ahead, Guapo. Cause I I don't know if he still record like this, but he used to record to what he be in the booth before they actual report pull the beat up mm. he already in the booth with the headphones on so it's like he pick his beats from the booth mm. so it's like while you going through the beats he listening he's like nah i don't like that one and oh yeah pick the beat he'll tell you pull it up he doing all this while he in the booth though yeah so he said so he may do that he may do two three songs without coming out the booth then on like say if it's on like the third or the, or the second or the fourth song he may do just do a hook, a verse, then a hook. Yeah. And then whoever's sitting outside, it may be Pee Wee Longway, it may be Young Thor, it may be Guapo, it may be Young Dolph, maybe Bent Roll Fresh. Yeah. It may be Bit Bang Black. Maybe OG Boo Dirty. It may be Young Scooter. Yeah. He'll just tell him one of the go in there and get on the song. My God. My God. I ain't gotta be ready because shit, if, after he tell you to get on that motherfucker, he gonna tell somebody else to get on that motherfucker and you. I ain't have no bullshit verb, man, because I ain't gonna lie, all them names, I just named them boys know how to put that shit them together. Them boys were putting that shit down. Them boys know how to put that shit together. <laughs> Talk to me about, that's what I'm talking about when I speak of that energy, man, being around some real talented folks, <clears throat> because I mean, from Black, the Bank, the Dolph, <clears throat> all them boys got busy, man. Yeah, there's a lot of good weed around, too. Come on now. A lot of good weed around. Being who you is now, though, Jose, Having the knowledge that you got now, man, what is the difference between this guy right here that we sitting here talking to and that young man that was in the industry just young and, you know, trying to figure it out and making it do what it's supposed to? I think before I do I think before I do things now. Okay. I don't just do things just to be doing it. Shit yeah. gotta be strategized. I gotta think about it. And I'm and I'm like I'm studying the game more. Yeah, I'm studying the game more. I'm learning more and more about the game, and I'm getting on all the way on top of all of my business. Like I ain't letting nothing slide or pass me by 2022. Mm -hmm. Like I gotta know about all the business, like the ins and outs, 
the loopholes, mm -hmm. everything. I want to know what's happening. I well, got to know what's happening. What is it that you done learned so far, though, man? As far as what, though? The game it, just to talk to me. I can't really break it down. It's just stuff that I pick up. Yeah. Like, it's just stuff I pick up. Like, is it even down to the, from the TikToking and all that all type of stuff? It's just stuff that I pick up, like the YouTube and yeah. just the interacting with the people, building your fan base, building your cult following, all that. Like, having people that really fuck with you and you really fuck with them, like, just, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just learning the game and how it go. And, and what advice, though? do you got for the next Jose Guapo that's about 15, 16, ready to get into this game? And he might have a hit on his hands, and he might man, be learn the game first, man. Learn the game. Do, study, do, get on YouTube, whatever, get you some books. Learn the game first so you can know about this shit, so you can know about your publishing, you can know about your royalties, you can know about your streaming checks, you can know about all that, you can know about your percentages, you can know about ownership. Learn the game first, man, because it's, it's easy to make a song and it pop. Mm -hmm. You make a song and it pop tomorrow, boom, now you don't even know the game. Facts. Facts. So learn the game. Learn the game. That's all I can say. Anybody that's trying to do rap music, learn this industry, ins and outs, and you good. Now, I understand that you stole some sweatpants. I didn't really steal the sweatpants. <laughs> Let's get that clear. Like. What the hell? So look, right? Hit that bike, Jose, because they need to hit it. This is what happened, right? Uh-huh. So we in this little bullshit ass store, right? Yeah. So my man, we only in this store because my man in this store, he trying to buy some little jogs and shit. So I'm in there, I'm just buying some too, just because I'm in here. But the little female that was at the counter, she was still trying to talk to me, but I wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So it's like... I really just did some shit like I had already had my bag, so it was like boom. The pants was right here, so she turned her head, so she had my bag was like right here. So really, I just slipped. The, I slipped the pants in the in my bag, like I'm some trying to be slick shit. Not yeah. Really don't know, like I'm stealing, like yeah. Stealing is a whole nother different thing. Like I was trying to be slick and I got caught. <laughs> But I ain't had no business really trying to steal them sweatpants. I mean, trying to sneak them sweatpants in the way. They weren't even there for real. Yeah. It like, it wasn't, I wasn't really stunned, though. It just, she had got mad because of something. I don't know. I can't really remember why she got mad. Mm -hmm. And she posted the video or whatever. But she got mad about something. But we all know that I could have bought the pants. Facts. Facts. Like, we all know, like, the <laughs> pants was, like, $30. <laughs> like, we had ripped thirty dollars up and bought and, and put it in the trash can. Come on. The pants were actually more than thirty dollars. I don't even know why they said thirty dollars. That's just how the blogs be. Yeah. But whatever the pants was, I could have paid for them. Exactly. I just tried to be slick and plus she she was giving my man a problem too. That's another reason if if anybody watched the whole video, she was kinda getting smart with my man. So while she was getting smart, my man I was like, Yeah, why you getting smart with him? I got some for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Try to slide the pants in the motherfucking. P I really and I really got a. I really got away. I ain't get caught until they went back and looked all at the camera. <laughs> until they went back and looked at the camera, and if and if and if they and if they went over been Jose Guapo that did it, they went up put the video out. Yeah, if they would have just been a regular civilian that did. They would have just been a. Um, they would have just never put the video out. I think she was crying though about some shit about like. I think the however much the pants cost come out her paycheck or something oh, like that. Damn. I think that's what she was more worried yeah. about than anything. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, well, I feel the pain just, on that. I, yeah, I'm like, you could have just pulled up on me and I would have just gave you that money. So you yeah. wouldn't have to be worried about no money coming out your paycheck. Shit. Yeah. Like, who gives a damn? Lashley Jose. You gotta steal though, so what for, for all the little comments and the little critics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We having a whole lot of that shit to where we ain't got to steal a motherfucking thing. I don't even be stealing these nigga hoes. I take them. <laughs> One thing about it, we're not stealers. We take. Come like, on. You going to know I got it. Like, this show hat? All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> you just go Debo. You know I got it. I'm going to walk out. You going to give my hat back? Nah, I ain't giving me your hat back. Like, we take. We don't steal. Nah, man. We take. My Let's God. get that understood. I would have that day, too. So, I really just on some bullshit. Like. Too high tripping, just tripping, thinking that I'm, 
I'm high moving slow, thinking like I'm moving fast, thinking like I got all the sense in the world. Yeah. And I, I got my stupid ass caught up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stupid ass caught up playing with them folks and that bullshit ass stuff. Lastly, Jose, what do you got to tell your fans? How can these folks <laughs> contact you? And is there anything that you need to get off your chest, my dog? Oh yeah, I want I want to let y'all know that I am who I made me. The project is out right now. All DSP DSPs. I dropped it simultaneously. That's you right. What I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it with the symbol. <laughs> yeah, I dropped this time simultaneously. Yeah. And um, it's some good songs on this project, man. And the, like I said, the deluxe will be out either within a month. Y'all gonna either get that <coughs> early, early March or late February. But it's on the way. And shit, just stream the project, man. And get at me. Follow me on Instagram at Jose Guapo on Twitter at Jose Guapo, Snapchat Young Guapo. I mean Young underscore Guapo X three. Uh. Jose Guapo on, on, on Clubhouse. On Jose Guapo SVL on Twitch. Real Jose Guapo on YouTube. Yeah, just follow all my platforms, man, and stay up with me. My okay. TikTok, babyface underscore Nelson. Just follow me on all my platforms. I'm be I'm finna be more active. A lot of content. Fucking with the people. We outside, all 2020, man. What's up? Ew! Jose, you did. my dog, appreciate you coming through this thing, boss. All Wish right. you nothing but the best and much success. Hey, man, I am who I made me out right now, man. Go get it. Eat it up. Me and all the kids ain't nothing bigger than God. Let's go. Already, Be high radio, shout it. Jose Guapo. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We go.